Yes, sir, you have to put it in fine. Thank you, sir. So please give your presentation now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Yes, so, uh, so go to the presentation, go to the slideshow. Uh, SK, sir, please uh, start the session. OK, madam. Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, I cannot see a uh, presentation of uh, Sukla, sir. <laughs> I'm really... Is it visible sir, to everybody sir. except Professor Goel? Yeah, but I am not able to see. Rai, sir, are you able to see? Yes, 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 I am see. Among one the one of the icons, if you pin it on the screen, it will be. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. No, no matter. No matter. Uh, Did so you see? Let's start. Please stop. It's okay. It's okay. Let's start. Professor Goel, are you able to see? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So. So. Yeah. so uh, now we are starting. Uh, good afternoon to all, uh, dear participants. Uh, today our uh, resource person is Professor Asif Sukla from IIT BHU. For his brief introduction, I would like to call uh, course director Dr. J P Rai sir for giving his uh, brief introduction. Uh, Dr. Rai sir. Thank you, Dr. Goel. I hope uh, everybody will be hearing to me. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. So, welcome all. Welcome, sir, on board. Uh, very good afternoon to all of uh, you participants. Uh, uh, please make the most of this session. I request uh, at the very outset. I will request that make the most of this session with this very senior faculty of IIT BHU, Professor S K Shukla. Introduce him. He is professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Institute of uh, Indian Institute. Of he is also founder coordinator of Center for Energy Resource, Energy and Resources Development, CERD, at IIT BHU itself, and is coordinator of CST UP Incubation Center for Grassroot Innovators at Mechanical Engineering Department, IIT BHU, Varanasi. He has developed research collaborations with different institu institutes of uh, United Kingdom and Japan in the field of thermal engineering and renewable energy uh, technology. He has published more than 100 research papers in high impact SCI focus journals, five books he has authored, and he has uh, contributed many book chapters in the books published by Springer, Elsevier, and the other reputed uh, publishers. Uh, he has been uh, placed on the board of editors and reviewers of highly reputed journals as a writer and researcher. He is best known for his ability to put theoretical things in a practical way. Recently, he has been conferred FRSC Fellow of Royal Society of United Kingdom. He has been awarded by Japanese Society of Promotion of, for Promotion of Sciences, JSPS Fellow Award 2014-15 for visiting GIFU University, Japan. He is a proud recipient of UGC T, uh, TEC Consortium Agreement Award 2010 in Sustainable Energy by University Grant Commission, New Delhi, India. He is also former Pro Vice Chancellor of Ranchi University. So, with such a towering personality, we are going to conduct this session. May I please request uh, our uh, resource person, Professor Shukla, to please proceed with his presentation and bless our participants, sir. Thank you very much, Professor Rai. It's indeed it's my pleasure. At the outset, I would like to uh, welcome all the participants, the course coordinators, faculty members and my dear students. Uh, it's my privilege to start with the uh, my sincere gratitude to the funding agency, ICR, and the Jammu Kashmir Agriculture University, Manaras University, the coordinators, conveners, organizers, Secretaries and everyone who is involved in, in a such long duration course. It's not easy to handle 21 days course. It's really appreciable, and I uh, thank you with folded hand to everybody. 
so my today's presentation i think i am audible to everyone is there yes, any sir. problem yes sir you are audible sir okay so uh, uh, i work uh, very closely with agriculture engineering as dr goel and dr rai knows we have collaborated in many uh, courses and projects something like doing short term course and a uh, small projects like you know to energy conservation so it's very close to my heart and that's why i decided to give this presentation uh, on water purification water is a very important ingredient it's life of human being and plant animal all the uh, species which are on the earth so water is plenty available you know and but drinkable water or potable water is merely difficult to find due to a lot of hazards and the wastes and different kind of impurities present in the water so my today's uh, presentation will focus on how to make drinking water clean water potable water out of waste water a brackish water and this will also this may be also used for the agriculture purposes where you know you need yeah, nowadays you know fish fish farming is also a type of agriculture it's a icr also funds due to the fish farming like that many things require the potable water for so that may be used there also the going before to this uh, actual topic i would like to give a brief introduction like dr rai told i am founder coordinator when i am founder coordinator i have um, I mean, liability and it's my duty to tell you what i have done in iit bhu this is which can be said as founded and founded the center for energy and resource development we have uh, all the facilities related to solar radiation and waste to energy wind energy every kind of facility we have i will go very fast to give you a glimpse then we will go to our actual topic this is the vision of the center is to carry out research and development in this area of alternative renewable energy technologies and contribute to the energy self sufficiency mission is you know as already you know every center has a vision and mission this is the it was the futuristic model which is now coming on the platform and actual actual uh, making shape in the center uh, solar energy chemical energy bio energy i have written about uh, the this model because we have the four faculties or associated faculty in this area to the center these are the uh, placements which was proposed and now it's taking shape uh, we have solar thermal research out or research output showing we have different kinds of equipment you can see these all are solar gadgets for testing recorded low cost concentrator collectors we could evacuated glass tube solar air heater plastic solar air collector testing standards design space all things you know we work on this four areas we have some kind of gadgets which our master student or btech student uh, do the experimentation during their courses then we have some research type of you know Uh, equipment which my PhD students work. A student from this is a model of a student who did my PhD from Oxford University, Iraq. Dr. Ali El Abdul Almadani, and he made this setup. These are the dryer, solar dryer. You know, all are dry. You can see that I am how much closely I am associated with agriculture engineering. We 
designed and installed a dryer in 2009 with the help of DST uh, for all our time with solar and it was it is successful commercialized it's a nearby pradap gadi area where a lot of aula cultivation takes place it's a gooseberry aula so this is this has been used and this is very useful for you know they go farmers who want to do design with nutrition contained it how any harmful effect to the nutrition of the aula because you know aula is used for many purposes in chon pras or in medicine and they need that in nutrients so i mean it's very useful to do solar drying of formula by our natural force conversion solar air heaters this is for essential oil distillation you know uh, you have you have done essential oil distillation by solar energy for marigold flower and you know it's a, it's a very useful and uh, suraj herbal by um, barabanki they have installed this plant for essential oil distillation of different you know uh, uh, plant and flowers they are working on it with continuous close close collaboration with me ah uh, this is a gasifier unit for using uh, waste for energy so uh, we you produce the producer gas and thin gas and maybe we can produce the green hydrogen it's very burning topic and now we are working in this area so this is a green hydrogen project like this is a biodiesel classification unit we you know all are you know all are related to agriculture i work very closely i told you it's a or we have identified 233 seeds which could be used to utilize for biodiesel production and we have uh, i mean by, by this classification unit we do the uh, biodiesel production and we have done for many plants and uh, seeds i will not take time to present this because we will deal divert from the main topic then we have wind energy training system then we have solar simulator training in wind energy we have leakage test so now we are coming for our actual topic why because we do the solar we play with the solar gadgets and equipments this is the one of the important thing which i have taken today for lecture that distillation of water brackish water or rest water and you know water covers 70% of our planet and it is easy to think that it will always be plentiful so you can see this this is agriculture require 72% of water you know very important and you know even sustainable uh, goals uh, this uh, water and energy nexus are very crucial point and important point which we have to we focus on so fresh water that we needed for drinking irrigation industrial development is incredibly rare only about 2.5% of the world's water is fresh water and around two third of it present in the frozen glacier or otherwise unavailable for our use you know this is the condition where is earth water you know see this is a very um, important thing you know, fresh water surface water and most you know lakes ground say total global water so 96.5% ocean water we cannot use for agriculture or potable you know or drinking irrigation so we need, we need actually these are the saline water we need it to oh, charge the earth you know from this yard water has water required on the earth surface is you know there is a difference which is availability and huge difference and the requirement so this is global water shortage you can see number of months in which water scarcity is greater than 100% you know so maximum 12 12 countries are there you know this is is it fine i am going fast or slow it's okay uh, it's okay sir it's okay sir okay.
वो उनसे भी पूछ लीजिए अच्छे से जो है पार्टिसिपेंट्स अवर रिसोर्स पर्सन इज आस्किंग समथिंग तो यू कैन रिप्लाई नहीं इज इट इज इट आई एम आई एम स्लो और फास्ट और इट्स ओके सर as per my opinion it's okay sir, sir okay okay participants participants have not been given uh, to uh, unmute themselves right now they will okay, be okay. Uh, given rights okay. for unmuting themselves in the discussion okay. session sir okay. so you are you are very uh, very your speed and uh, presentation is very fine very fine okay sir. okay so clean fresh water is an essential ingredient for a healthy human life this is what the presumption or you know it's a synopsis that why we need the water and what is the requirement and what is the condition today 1.4 to billion people including 450 million children live in areas of higher extremes extremely high water vulnerability you know you need united nations report water security for all 2.3 billion people live in water stressed countries so these are the uh, this is really challenging and very important so water is important precious or somewhere it is available free so why not use the free energy for making the water pure or potable out of waste water now it's a very good option we can you can do the distillation with the help of heat coal any conventional food If you use solar energy, it's a novelty. That's why I told you it's a novel. And novelty is we have solar distillation set up solar stills since very long. But in our lab, we have made a glass evaporator, which is novel, which can give you know water. If we have one meter by one meter square area, I will go to further presentation. You will see one meter by one meter square area of equipment solar still. You will get. Three to four liter water, which is very less. So the requirement is for bucket of water. So how we can produce bucket of water out of waste water? This is our purpose, and this is why our research is novel. So overall energy distribution of solar distillation is a function of the wavelength between 300 newton nanometer to 2500 nanometer for a surface perpendicular to this radiation. Sodium chloride is the main region of sea water salinity. Uh, as you can see, it's very clear. No, no. Infrared and red. Yeah. We are. We are actually. This is why it is shown because we are going to use the solar energy in a container, uh, in a equipment, in an enclosure where. short wave wavelength solar radiation transmitted through the glass but the cover is glass so it doesn't allow to uh, long wave radiation to come out of the glass i mean of the glass you know the container or equipment so this is the property where we are which we are going to use because if solar radiation is not coming out once it enters in the setup it will heat the water and produce the vapor so solar distillation is the process to obtain distilled water irrespective of impurity present in the water this is important you know you can many thing you know you have reverse osmosis process or aro system or uh, other uh, water purification system but distillation is the process to obtain distilled water irrespective of impurity present in the water you know this is a, there is a beauty of this process this is the importance of this process desalinization of sea water you know this is the percentage 3.5% 96.5% this is salt and this is water and furnish a limitless supply of drinking water desalination is energy intensive process hence renewable energy resources could be better alternative to, to drive the water desalination process this is solar still this is our equipment which i was talking about you can see that solar energy passes through the glass cover you know this is this is sun it radiation i intensity it comes to the 
uh, passes to the glass cover. It is the glass. This one is the glass. It passes through the glass cover. Some part of radiation is reflected back through the glass, but maximum part is about 80 percent radiation passes transmitted through the glass. And at the bottom we have a water. In the bottom we have water above the basin. We have a basin at in the, the black column is basin. We have a basin where we have a brackish or saline or wastewater. Radiation passes through the glass. It, re, it, it reaches to the basin, and from basin, it is it is absorbed, and this heat is transmitted to the glass from the basin, attenuated with some attenuation, and this is a very attenuation factor. So that that is a engineering term. We will we can uh, understand that it process the heat. And the water is evaporated, and it, when it is evap evaporated, it comes to the bottom surface of the glass, inner glass cover, and it is the steam strikes to the inner glass cover. They lose their latent heat, and it becomes a condensate. It's lodged and it becomes condensate, and it comes to the here. In the form of droplets is collected in the jar. So this is the you know polar distillation system. It's a green and clean device to dissolve the salty water with the help of solar energy without any carbon footprint. In this system, heat and mass transfer phenomena occur simultaneously. Uh, inside solar steel convective radiative and transfer takes place, whereas outside radiative and convective dominates. So those who know heat transfer, because some engineering expert is there because this is uh, required to understand the design that heat and mass transfer take place. Heat of, in, in, when vapor is formed, evaporation takes place. It means heat and mass both takes place. You no know, heat and mass transfer both take place. So there is a heat in the vapor, and vapor formation is from the water. So it is a mass. So heat and mass transfer takes place. So we have a direct solar desalination system, and I include the direct use of thermal energy of solar radiation, of fresh water production from saline, and we have indirect solar radiation, solar desalination system. So we have a uh, with a different technology, multi-stage distillation, multi-effect distillation, reverse osmosis. I told you. So methodology we we have done in this. Uh, uh, solar visualization. I told you that solar steels are very old and they are they require modification. You know, in Middle East and in Australian coast, I mean many places, this is very much popular and required. But the performance is low, the output is low, so we have to increase the output. Like we, for one meter by one meter, at least we get bucket of water. Not three, four liters of distilled water. So we have done some calculations to find the optimal tilt angle of solar steel even in intersection. You know, we have six climatic zones: cold and sunny, hot and humid, dry and humid, uh, dry and sunny, and semi-arid arid zones. So these all are, you know, we have a tropical zone, composite climate. So in this climate we in every climate the solar radiation or solar intensity behavior is different and we need the device uh, design according to the climatic zone and the season yeah even you know we have winter season or solar you know it's effect of solar angles that is uh, that is a different story we, we don't want to discuss here but we have done this kind of optimal tilt angle for our tropical climatic zone winter season. Use of novel peculiar material. This is the novel because you know basin is a black absorber. It absorbs the solar radiation. It absorbs the heat. 
but if absorption capacity doubles or triples are multiplied then more and more heat will pass to the water because of absorption of at the solidation at the basin liner and the more and more evaporation will take place and the output will be more this is what we want to do by this novel material this is the novel meter to con conceive a novel design of solidity that has high heat regain retain capacity to design the absorber and glass treatment area to improve the efficiency and yield also selection of fabricated material is very crucial for low cost and efficient performance no because it's we are working for rural people agriculture people so cost should be minimized with a good performance and you have to do the thermal cost analysis of comparison between conventional solar steel and modified solar steel so this is these are the solar steels you know, physical models we have done tilt angle of 20 degree 30 degree why we have done because it's a solar radiation has you know if it it has it is of two type one is direct radiation and one is diffuse radiation we want that maximum direct radiation because it has high heat capacity heat it it has high heat content it should reach to the glass cover and to the water so that uh, if it comes to the normal to the plane it is a beam or direct radiation so you we do the tilting so that we get the more direct radiation and this is the three models and three uh, with tilt angle we have two models a single slope and one is double slope means we have two slopes south and east and west slope south east so this is uh, quantum dot material we have done the coating with nano material quantum dot material you can see in this basin of the solar steel uh, this is the schematic diagram and this is the actual diagram this is the the thermal circuit you know it's those who know heat transfer they can understand otherwise don't worry about that it's, it's kind of uh, calculating the heat balance then this is the quantum dot material it's a black phosphorus quite quantum dot material with pyrex glass we have mixed it and then we have painted it this is 1 2 and 3 this one this one and this one we have measured then we have in a particular um, proportion we have mixed with uh, black paint and then we have painted it in the basin of the solar steel and these are the measuring instruments by which we measure the temperature and the wind velocity and output so the second is i mean the, uh, we have done the 3d you know the remodeling for conventional solar steel and three time solar steel uh, you can this is the material these are the energy balance i i, I guess i will leave here because uh, i will leave this portion because many other people will not be very comfortable but we have, we have, we do this because we have to uh, know the heat and mass transfer in order to get the maximum output calculation so we do the so what are the performance parameters how do you analyze the performance that it is a novel it is a good or it is a moderate so yield we do the measurement for the yield cumulative yield is summation of hourly yield you know every hour we have some output this of distilled water and throughout the day how much we have got the yield summation of Our hourly yield, it is the total yield. Then we do the energy efficiency. This is a total heat utilized divided by the solar energy falls on the solar steel basin area. So this is you can see you can see this is this is the calculation. This is mass into latent heat divided by solar radiation into area into 3600 is the per second so uh, we can do like energy efficiency energy efficiency means you know quality of energy which is utilized for uh, producing the solar distilled distilled water uh, then we do the cost analysis 
monetary cost analysis. So we go for the different types, you know, direct solar distillation, thermal energy storage methods. Why we do the thermal energy storage? Because during the day we have a solar radiation, but in the night we don't have solar radiation. So if you have a energy storage material during the day, that solar energy will be stored apart from operation. We have some storage, and in the night it can be used, you know, as a uh, energy for making the solar still operative for 24 hours. So this was. We have active solar steel and passive solar steel. If you have any uh, pump or something, some uh, device which which actually accelerate or enhance the output is, is called extra active and passive. We don't have any kind of outer uh, extra device. So if you go for the solar energy storage, we have a sensible heat, latent heat in storage. You know, Latent heat storage materials are phase change material, and sensible heat storage is, you know, rock. Rock is a very gravel. They are a good form of sensible heat storage. But we go for latent heat storage because dealing with high temperature, we will use the phase change material. What is quantum dot? Quantum dot, you know, why it is novel and what is how you make it. You have a question that you are telling novel. It's a nano crystal of semiconductor diameter. It is effective, effectively concentrated to single point. So if you focus each on single point, naturally, you know, you must have seen that through the glass we in the I mean uh, to to the lens we we burn the paper, piece of paper to do the concentration. This is luck. Yeah? If you concentrate the focus on a single point, uh, automatically the temperature will be very high and high heat. Will be generated. They are they are made for a semiconductor such as silicon material that is neither conductor nor insulated but can be chemically treated. So it behaves like either. Quantum drugs are semiconductor particle which which dimensions are less than the excitron or radius, resulting in quantum confinement confinement effect. Quantum confinement effect. Yes. So it is confined in between the Electrons in terms of energy level, potential wells, valence bond, conduction bonds, and electron energy and bending. So this is confinement effect. And this effect can be turned down by changing the shape and size of quantum material, enabling a broad range of solar absorption and emission capability. So all these effects are changed to have a higher absorption and emission capability. So, so that was the novel material. And these are the tilt effect of tent angle. You can see the output. So, in the, you know, cumulative two model two is gives high yield. So it means this is the best thing with 30 degree tilt angle. You know. This was the actually result. You can see. So same. It's a effect of wind velocity for the same set of experimentation. And if wind is higher, so higher heat transfer will take place, and the output will be more. Similarly, for efficiency, and the efficiency of model three. This is. Actually, for every day efficiency changes due to solar radiation. So it has taken the effect of day change in solar radiation on the model one, model two, and model three. If we put a quantum dots and concentrate, you can see the yield is if you have 15 gram, you know, the yield has in maximum 29, 17.6, it's around 3 liter, 15 gram. But after 15 gram, it is there is no significant deal. Similarly, energy efficiency and thermal efficiency. 
Uh, uh, prismatic solar still is something a new design. Then where we have done the experiment, you have got the 36 more than three liters of LD, you know, three 3.6 liter, 3.7 liter, you know. So if you have a 3.7 liter per hour, uh, so you can see it's it's going to be a bucket of water. Then comparative analysis, cumulative productivity. So we have compared the type of solar steel, one, two, three model with phase change material and storage and without phase change material and quantum dot. You know. So with, without quantum dot, you can see the efficiency with the quantum dot PCM, it's a 49.3%, very high. So this is a, you know, almost more than double. So naturally, it's a good model. Then we go for the summary table. Yeah, in winter season, the tilt angle will be higher than latitude angle. Moreover, our tone tilt angle provides smooth and seamless glide of condensates into shop collector. The polystyrene coverage on condenser surface in night time proves the doctoral yields, which is up to this much, you know, only which is so these are, you know, our payback period is four years, around five years, and for some normal, and for our, it, it's a uh, conventional, let's say, with PCM and QD, it's a three years. You know. So it's very good. In three years, we, we can get the payback period. What we invest, we will get back in three years. And the life of the solar is still minimum 10 years. So. For the other seven years, the device and the energy all are free, and you are getting the solar distill, solar distilled water, the potable water. So this is what the novelty is. I think, I mean, if the time permits, we can discuss more other thing. Otherwise, I will stop here, saying you thank you and open for questions if you any. Thank you very much, sir for such an illustrative uh, lecture. Uh, many of the things, uh, even the mathematical part, I, co I could not <laughs> understand <laughs> since it's not it's not my subject. And uh, I hope uh, participants, because uh, oh, it was so I much I want to discuss. Actually, actually yes. we have time. We have time of, of around 20 minutes. So we can discuss, yes. you know, if anything yes. you want to discuss, we can discuss. We we have some questions, sir. Uh, yeah. uh, Dr. Asma Sherwani wants to know what is the lifespan of the solar glass evaporator? Uh, 